The Black Death was a lethal monstrosity that seized the Middle Ages, killing millions. However, the Black Death never touched farmland, buildings, ships, machines, or gold. This way, survivors could rebuild society. Although many would return to their former lives, the Earth was forever changed. Humanity was launched into a new era. Several events led to the decline of feudalism. There was an economic revival so knights could be paid. They became soldiers of the state. Because of this, fewer lords relied on knights, their vassals, to provide protection. Gunpowder and weapons like the longbow and cannon came along, lessening the dominance of knights. Stone castles were no longer the ultimate fortresses, as they gave in to the power that came behind cannons. Cities became wealthier and more important, so the aristocracy was no longer completely needed. There were early government officials who took over the functions that were previously carried out by the vassals on the fiefs. The Renaissance aided the development of states to some extent. Germany was akin to Italy in the sense that it was divided into many largely independent states. However, Germany was at the core of the Holy Roman Empire which unified the various German states in its own way. The princes in Italy and the great royal courts supported the Renaissance. The French King Francis I, who ruled from 1515 to 1547, attempted to fill his surroundings with the most refined representatives of the Italian Renaissance. There was a newly found force behind the thinking that said that God doesn't control everything. That through science and technology and learning, humans can remodel society and lay down the foundations for the world of the future. Humanism ignited trade and a desire for better things in life. Florence, Italy became the model trade city for others to follow. Life in the city is good. At the market, there is always movement and profits are high. You are treating yourself to more and more luxuries. Eccentricities, some may call them. Europe's economy began to flourish. New goods from the east were introduced to the general public. Merchants brought these goods across the Silk Road, a caravan route from Europe to China that had previously fallen into disuse. In the 1200s, the Silk Road was reopened by the Mongols. There was a prominent traveler that spent 20 years in Asia. This man wrote a book that rejuvenated an interest in the Far East. The book inspired traders to seek Asian goods and so the movement began. A fire would soon start thanks to the work done by one named Marco Polo. Florence, Genoa, Milan, and Venice had become major trading centers in Italy by the 1300s. However, manufacturing centers lived in these cities as well. Specialization occurred. The port cities of Venice and Genoa were essential gateways for trade, as massive ships often stopped in these two cities bringing with them dazzling arrays of products from Asia. Trade led to banking. A new banking system appeared all over Europe. It was developed in Florence. The biggest players in this game were the Medici family. The rich usually controlled the government in Italian cities and by 1434 Cosimo de' Medici ruled Florence. He had a great desire to make Florence a center of art, literature and culture. 
This devotion of art and education was central to the Renaissance. During this time, great advances in the fields of science and mathematics were made. It was discovered that the Earth moved around the Sun. Major changes in education occurred as students began to study the humanities. History soon became important and necessary. The Renaissance was a blending of curiosity, artistry, and an endless hunger for knowledge and understanding. The Renaissance left an imprint on humanity that is as fresh today as it was the day it was created. It was no coincidence that Columbus discovered America in the 1400s. It was not just a stroke of chance that Columbus consulted the same mathematician who taught the prodigious architect Filippo Brunelleschi. The Renaissance took the globe by storm and tore apart all of the old guides and manuals. A fire that burned through people like da Vinci and Columbus. A perpetual motion that has redefined the arts 100 times over. The Renaissance lives today as a fire that has burned its way through time and is now biting the path ahead for humanity in the 21st century. One of the famous writers during the Renaissance period is Petrarch, Francesca Petrarca, Petrarch in English, born July 20, 1304 and died July 19, 1374. He was an Italian scholar and poet and one of the earliest humanists. Petrarch is often called the father of humanism. He is known for his work, Laura, April 6, 1327. Petrarch wrote books on infatuation, a brief passion for someone or something. Petrarch had a short-lived love for Laura, some young woman he saw first in church. This poem talks about how love attacked him and he was defenseless to it. Probably didn't want to ignore that love. In the last stanza, it says how love attacked him or shot him, meaning he fell in love. But how did a woman did that bring love to her? So he loved her, not she did not. That is why the line in 18 and 19 talk how he cried. Maybe for that reason, he fell in love with someone that could not love him back. Another famous writer during the Renaissance period is Giovanni Boccaccio, born December 21, 1375. He was an Italian author and poet, a friend, student, and correspondent of Petrarch, an important Renaissance humanist, and the author of a number of notable works, including The Decameron, On Famous Women, and his poetry in the Italian vernacular. Giovanni Boccaccio began writing the Decameron in 1350 and finished a couple of years later. The word Decameron comes from two Greek words, deca means ten and yupa means day. Together, the word means a ten-day event. The story takes place over ten days the novel is in the form of a frame narrative, a short within the story. Seven young women and three young men flee from Florence to an uninhabited villa in the countryside of Fiesso. Each person gets to be king or queen for the day and gets to pick a thing for the day's story. Each person tells a story every day. Another famous writer is Nicola de Bernardo de Machiavelli, born May 3, 1469 and died June 21, 1527. 
He was an Italian historian, politician, diplomat, philosopher, humanist, and writer based in Florence during the Renaissance. One of Machiavelli's best known books is The Prince, written in 1513. It contains a number of maxims concerning politics, but rather than the more traditional subject of hereditary prince, it concentrates on the possibility of a new prince, examines the imperfect conduct of human beings, began with an idea that most people are selfish, fickle, and corrupt. To succeed, a prince must be strong as a lion and shrewd as a fox. Another famous writer during the Renaissance period is Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra, known as Cervantes, born in 1547 and died in 1616. The greatest writer in the Renaissance in Spain, served as a soldier against the Turks and was imprisoned for five years by pirates in North Africa. He became a tax collector. Don Quixote de la Mancha, published first in 1605. In this book, Cervantes mocked the way medieval codes of the chivalry distorted reality. Don Quixote is a kind, elderly gentleman who spends so much time reading medieval tales that he loses his sense of reality. He decides to become a knight and set out to do heroic deeds, blind to the real world. Don Quixote sees a herd of sheep as an army and thinks windmills are giants. He idealizes a servant on a nearby farm, describing her in terms of courtly love rather than seeing her as a sturdy peasant. She really is. Another known writer during the Renaissance is William Shakespeare. William is considered the greatest of all English authors. His texts and plays are known worldwide and are updated constantly. Known for the timelessness of his work, wrote comedies, tragedies, histories, and sonnets. His work reflected the Renaissance ideas of classical Greek and Roman culture individualism and humanism. In 1611, at the age of 47, his plays already made success in stage, so he retired to his native town. One of his famous work is Romeo and Juliet, known until today. Shakespeare's tragic drama of the star crows, young lovers, Romeo Montague and Juliet Capulet is best remembered for the famous balcony scene. Romeo Montague and Juliet Capulet are teenagers who fall deeply in love, but their families are bitter enemies. They say the moment and marry in secret. They make every effort to conceal their actions, but these end in tragedy when Romeo, Juliet, Cybald, Mercutio and Paris all die. The themes running through the play address the issues of the consequences of immature blind passion, hatred, and prejudice. From Franco Zeffirelli. The acclaimed director of Romeo and Juliet, Mel Gibson, Glenn Close, Alan Bates, Paul Schofield, Ian Holm, Helena Bonham Carter, in Hamlet, the story of a king's death, a ghost's revelation, my uncle, a brother's ambition, a queen's passion. Have you forgot me? No, by the rude, not so. You are the queen. Your husband's brother's wife, and would it were not so, you are my mother. A father's suspicion. A daughter's honor. 
What should such fellows as I do, crawling between earth and heaven, believe? None of us. A son's revenge. Now could I drink hot blood. choose whether to forgive or to avenge, to love, to hate, to live, to die, to be or not to be. Hamlet, the extraordinary telling of a classic tale. And I may know play of William Shakespeare is A Midsummer Night's Dream. It is believed that it was written between 1590 and 1596. It portrays the events surrounding the marriage of the Duke of Athens, Celsius and Hippolyta. These include the adventures of four young Athenian lovers and a group of six amateur actors who are controlled and manipulated by fairies that inhabit a forest in which most of the play is set. The play categorized as a comedy is one of Shakespeare's most popular works for the stage and is widely performed across the world. For one incredible night, Everyone will fall in love at first sight when magic lends fate. I hate thee and love Helen. A hand. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. <laughs> From the greatest storyteller of all time comes a romantic comedy starring Rupert Everett, Callista Flockhart, Kevin Klein, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Stanley Tucci. <laughs> Rent the magic of William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. I've had a most rare vision. Another work of William Shakespeare is the Macbeth. It is considered one of his darkest and most powerful tragedies. Set in Scotland, the play traumatizes the corrosive psychological and political effects produced when its protagonist. The Scottish Lord Macbeth chooses evil as the way to fulfill his ambition for power. He commits regicides to become king and then furthers his moral death with the reign of murderous terror to stay in power, eventually turning the country into civil war. In the end, he loses everything that gives meaning and purpose to his life before losing his life itself. At least, we'll die with harness on our back! No more of that, my lord. No more of that. Come, ceiling night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day. Not upon the order of your going, but go at once! All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. <laughs> <laughs> All hail, Master. I begin to be a weary of the sun and wish the estate of the world were now undone. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it. Another famous writer is Christopher Marlowe, baptized on 26 February 1564 and died May 13, 1593. He was an English dramatist, poet, and translator of the Elizabethan era. Marlowe was the foremost Elizabethan tragedian of his day. He greatly influenced William Shakespeare, who was born in the same year as Marlowe and who rose to become the preeminent Elizabethan playwright after Marlowe's mysterious early death. Marlowe's plays 
are known for the use of blank verse and their overreaching protagonist. One of his work is Tamburlaine the Great, is a play in two parts by Christopher Marlowe. It is loose to blaze in the life of the Central Asian Empire, Timur the Lame, written in 1587 or 1588. The play is a milestone in Elizabethan public drama. The Tragical History of the Life and Death of Dr. Faustus commonly referred to simply as Dr. Faustus, is a play by Christopher Marlowe, based on the folk story, in which a man sells his soul to the devil for power and knowledge. Dr. Faustus was first published in 1604, 11 years after Marlowe's death and at least 12 years after the first performance of this play. Another well-known writer during the Renaissance is Edmund Spencer. He was an English poet best known for the Fairy Queen, an epic poem and fantastical allegory celebrating the Tudor dynasty and Elizabeth I. He is recognized as one of the premier craftsmen of modern English, verse in its infancy and is considered one of the greatest poets in the English language. One of his known work is The Fairy Queen, is an incomplete English epic poem by Edmund Spencer. The first half was published in 1590, and the second installment was published in 1596. The Fairy Queen is notable for its form. It was the first work written in Spencerian stanza, and is one of the longest poems in English language. Take, sir, your timely rest. In the style of Virgil's Aeneid. This spring. Comes an epic tale from the author of a shepherd's calendar. Arthurian legends retold for our time. Stories of holiness. Courtly love. Tom Killingbeck, Caroline Ward, Ollie Wiggins, Amelia Reed, The Fairy Queen, Book One, The Poem to Read in 1596. Another known writer. Sir Thomas More, known to Roman Catholics as St. Thomas More since 1935. He was an English lawyer, social philosopher, author, statesman, and noted Renaissance humanist. More's best known and most controversial work, Utopia, 
is a Nobel written in Latin. Mark completed and Erasmus published the book in Leuven in 1516, but it was only translated into English and published in his native land in 1551. Law after Moore's execution and the 1684 translation became the most commonly cited. Another famous writer during the Renaissance is John Milton. He was an English poet, polemicist, a scholarly man of letters, and a civil servant for the Commonwealth of England under Oliver Cromwell. He wrote at the time of religious flux and political upheaval, and is best known for his epic poem, Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is an epic poem in blank verse. By the 17th century, English poet John Milton, it was originally published in 1667 in 10 books, with a total of over 10,000 individual lines of verse. A second edition followed in 1674, changed into 12 books. The poem concerns the biblical story of the fall of man, the temptation of Adam and Eve with the fallen angel seed, and their expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Milton's purpose stated in book it is to justify the ways of God to man. Another known writer during the Renaissance is Marca Aquin de Montaigne was one of the most influential writers of the French Renaissance, known for popularizing the essay as a literary genre and commonly thought of as, as the father of modern skepticism. He became famous for his effortless ability to merge serious intellectual exercises with casual anecdotes and autobiography, and his massive volume is thus translated literally as attempts or trials, contains to this day some of the most widely influential essays ever written. <laughs>